That's right. We are back here at Rolling Loud Miami 2023. Right. I am Swaggy C, joined by the Black Music Action Coalition, including Profit. Yes. What's up, man? And How of you course, doing? How you doing? A couple of these great men beside us. Yeah, we got Congressman, Congressman. Hank Johnson and Congressman Jamal Bowman. Congressman Hank Johnson is from uh, Georgia. Yes. And uh, Congressman Hank Johnson, uh, Jamal Bowman is from the BX, from the Bronx. Wow. So uh, you guys are here, and obviously we're celebrating 50 years of hip-hop, and you all are uh, connecting very tightly with Rolling Loud right now. And it's important yeah. because um, what I heard is that, you know, rap is on trial right yeah. now. That is what we are seeing in the headlines. So why is it so important for the Black Music Action Coalition to get involved? Well, you know, um, two years ago it came across our attention that there was over 500 cases where black men were being prosecuted mm. with only lyrics as the evidence. Mm -hmm. um, so that prompted Black Music Action Coalition to lead a working group uh, to introduce the federal legislation. And we were able to have the genius uh, mind and, and, and heart of, of, of Congressman uh, Hank Johnson. Uh, and then we were able to get uh, Congressman Jamal Bowman as a co-author uh, to introduce this legislation mm -hmm. um, to actually uh, prohibit the use of lyrics solely as the form of evidence to prosecute. Absolutely. Now, I know you represent the Bronx and you represent the state of Georgia as well. And it's interesting uh, because those two states, uh, we are seeing artists consistently, especially even right now, behind bars. You have people like Young Thug. You have people that are in New York. A lot of that, that drill music sound has landed a lot of these artists behind bars. So what are you all doing specifically in your regions to handle this? Well, we need state legislation as well. So we're introducing the legislation at the federal level, which, mm -hmm. which deals with federal prosecution. We are also organizing across the country to make sure each and every state introduce a bill that's similar. The bottom line is, if you have evidence to convict of a crime outside of lyrics, and then you want to include lyrics, that's different. But if you want to use lyrics so in and of themselves, by themselves, that's unacceptable. Rap is free speech. Rap is art. Free speech is protected by the First Amendment. We got to protect rap. We got to protect art to make sure that we're not targeting black men, putting them in jail when they should not be. That's right. And, and that's exactly what has been happening uh, over the last uh, 10 to 20 years quietly. Now, rap has been around now. This is the 50th year. Absolutely. But there's been something eating away at the ability of rap artists to ply their trade without fear of their music and their creative content coming back to haunt them at some point. It's okay that you have a uh, dream about a piece of fiction and you put that down. It might have some truth about it, mm -hmm. but you, uh, you throw in some, uh, you know, some, some truth and some untruth and you come up with a lyric, put it down on a beat, send it out there, and then next thing you know, prosecutors are at your door mm -hmm. uh, questioning you about what you have rapped about. Yeah. And then using it in court against you. So, you know, there have to be some guardrails put up. And that's what the Rap Act does. But, you know, I would say this, so, Swag, in terms of what you were saying and what are we doing, right? Hip-hop, rap music has always been a reflection of the streets, right. of the community. I've, I, for the last 30 years, been fighting and defending hip-hop. And I've always told people the, the, who ask me, do you have problems with the lyrics? Do I like everything I hear? No. I don't like what I see. Mm. These lyrics are reflective of what we see Experience. and they live yeah. in. So what am I doing about the lyrics? I'm trying to change systems, yeah. mm. trying to change the community. You change that, then you change the music. So do I think that we have a responsibility as artists? Yes. But should we, as a black community, the only community mm -hmm. in which is targeted like this, I can't help to think that there's another underlying me meaning for this outside of us just wanting to uh, uh, regulate music. I think this is another attempt to keep their foot on the neck of black America. So what do you all think, you know, this question is open for, for each of you at the table, uh, are the next steps and how can the community get involved with the rap back and, and, and back it and all the work that you all are doing? We need everyone to register to vote. We need everyone to vote, but after that, you got to hold your elected officials accountable. That's right. If you already are registered and you vote consistently, you got to contact your elected official at every level of government, local, state, and federal, to get them to support this piece of legislation. That's the only way it's going to pass, and you have to hold them accountable. If you don't support this piece of legislation, we will vote you out of office. Yeah. That's the message people have to understand. 
Absolutely. And I, I know you all were able to get on that stage uh, yes. uh, alongside some of our co-founders for, for Rolling Loud. What was that moment like and what was the message that you wanted to spread? The same message. Tariq is, uh, sits on the Executive Leadership Council of Black Music Action Coalition. And for the past two years, he have allowed us to show up at this festival and make sure that we bring the conversation of social and racial justice to the generation that's going to actually bring about the change. Yeah. You know, you know, this is the biggest hip hop um, festival, festival in, the in the world. 200 plus thousand people, all peaceful, by the way, mm -hmm. and right. multicultural come together to listen to rap music. And we need to preserve and protect the ability of our artists to do what they do, and that is contribute to the culture of this country. And I would say this, shout out to Louisiana. You know, um, uh, Brother Bowman spoke about the, the state legislation. Mm. What happens is you introduce a federal piece of legislation, but that triggers the states to get focused and active. Mm -hmm. New York has a bill that we're trying to push. Mm -hmm. uh, Louisiana have a bill that actually passed. California. California, California shout out to Governor Newsom, yeah. who signed that bill to prohibit the use of lyrics. And that's all of a, of a, 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 a reaction of our federal push. Right. So A, make sure you stay involved on the federal level, but put pressure on your local elected officials. Brother Bowman pointed this out, and I'll say this and I'll leave. 335 million people in America there's 535 lawmakers. Mm. There's 535 people that make the laws for all 335 million. We sitting with two of these lawmakers who give a damn about young people, who give a damn about humanity, mm. who give a damn about democracy. We have to support them because they supporting us. Yeah. Before you guys leave, uh, what are some ways that for our people at home who are watching this stream or people who are in the crowd right now, these young people, to get involved with the Black Music Action Coalition and Rap on Trial? Follow us on Instagram, BMA underscore coalition.